So at this point, we're, we put together a demonstration of, of onboarding a branch. And what I'm really doing here is taking a device that's fresh out of the box. Um, I'm going to set it on my desk. I've got some video there to go with it. But what we've done is we've built the template that uh, is associating with this box that we're going to connect to our data centers through a FIOS connection, which is a typical broadband connection uh, provided by Verizon. That's going to be the green cable. And in the red cable, we're going to have an MPLS link. So in this case, this is just an example of how we onboard a branch and get it deployed. So, so let's see how this goes. Okay, folks. So from here on out, we're going to do the URL-based CTP onboarding with a branch device that's fresh out of the box. We have already gone through and made our templates, and uh, we're pretty close to getting started. My name is Sean Germanowski. I'm with the Tenio Group. And I'm going to walk you through these steps and uh, hopefully keep it under five minutes. Um, I've already gone through and built the appliance here in the template pages, so I can walk you through that real quick. Um, you can see we've given it just kind of a surname for the day. This is our organization. It's in a lab. These are our controllers at AWS. We've got 100 megabits per second. We have the analytics cluster enabled. The interfaces are the interesting part because we're going to have a Fios internet. It's DHCP. We're going to have uh, an MPLS network here. That's a static route. Um, internally, we're going to have a couple of interfaces in two different networks, office users and management, right? Um, some relatively built-in default routes, but we're going to have some tunnels here. We're going to have no inbound NAT services. Uh, we've got DHCP enabled and uh, NTP, and that's about it. So I don't need to recreate this because I already have built it. Um, let me go into the binding information. So here is where we define what our interfaces look like and what they talk to. So 88444, that's going to be our public DNS. Over here, this is going to be our management pool beginning range, 111.10 there. Uh, you'll see it end at .100. We have this other, the office users network is going to be 192.168.112.10 and ending um, I only gave myself one address there because that's all I needed. Now here we have the management IP. This is going to be the gateway. So that's 111.1. .1. And we're going to have 112.1. .1. This is our MPLS static address. And this is our gateway. We should be pretty well set to go. Um, we have the URL ZTP enabled here for DHCP. And we've got our coordinates. And my name's in there. So we are good to go. So I'm going to deploy this, or was my email to come across with my information. So I've got that now. We can launch to the device and activate it. This is the hash that's used. So you use this email, connect the device to your laptop with DHCP on the internal WAN, and you plug it into the WAN network, and it should be good to go. I'm going to pause the recording and the device connected in my management interface. I'm just going to run a quick command here to let's see what configuration is on this box at the moment. My interface is brief. And what we see is our management IP address here. That's what I'm connected to in running this shell. Um, this deals with the activation internal network, and this is an alternative one, but this is the one that we're going to use. And this is in port one right there. That's what we're going to be using to push the configuration. So I'm going to hop off of this and I'm going to set my Ethernet connection to DHCP and I'm going to move my link. So I'm moving it right over here into port 1. I'm also going to connect my files connection to the WAN 0 port. That has to be active for this to function. Alright, so now I've got my DHCP address assigned by the device. I've got my WAN Connection active. Let's see if I can. Well, I can't run this now because this is dropped off. This is no longer connected, but that's okay. Let me just go over here, grab my email. So this was emailed to me, and I can certainly forward this to the activation person or if it's something that we're doing. Um, basically, all we do is we click. We have this hash here that has the entire configuration. So with my connection in there, I can activate the device. Now you're going to see the web UI show up for the device. It's going to let me know what to do. It's going to check reachability. It's going to let me activate the device by clicking this. So let me do that 
and it's going to go through some rudiments. And basically what's happening right now is the interfaces are being configured from the, conf the email activation link that I was provided. It's configuring the device. It'll give it a name. It'll spin up the links. And this process generally takes about two minutes or so, sometimes faster. And that, that sound you heard was the device has come up. And we can claim this device. Now, I'm going to let this finish. And what we'll see is this device show up in my administration page. I was looking for. Uh, we've got the device ready to be registered. It's going to have this name on it, right? It's going to send me a registration code, which is multi-factor. It's going to send that to my email address right now. And hopefully, with any luck, we'll hear that pop in here in just a moment. There it is. We got a registration code. We take this. This is part of that two-factor. We copy, paste it, claim the device, Auto registration is now complete. You can go back to the controller. Right here, we don't see the device appear here. It should be called webinar demo. You don't see it quite yet. And as the device gets its configuration and reboots, it'll show up here. And let's see, it's almost exactly 4 o'clock right now. Let's see how long this actually takes. I'm going to pause the recording and be right back. Okay, it's about 4.02 now. It took a couple of minutes to get configured and reboot. I believe the device should be reachable. Let me see if we are now visible on the controller. And there it is. The device has now been pulled in as a branch to my lab's organization. It's up and up. And what I can do from here is get into the device and take a look at it. Let's see how it looks. So I have remoted my SSH into the box for some administration. Let's take a look. Show it. The face is brief. And I'm going to do this so it formats nicely. And now you see all the configurations. We have the control tunnels. We have the um, internet transport. This is the FIOS connection. This is, uh, remember, what we showed in the initial video of the whiteboard. This is our FIOS connection here. That's general internet. This is our MPLS transport connection. And these are our internal LAN connections that we're going to work with later in the video sessions for the demo. So this was successful. This is exactly how it's supposed to work. And it took all of a couple of minutes to get the URL deployed via email. It had the two-factor authentication associated with it. You basically make a connection. You click the link. It activates the device. It calls home. It pulls its configuration, does a reboot, and it's ready to roll. So entire deployment time could be probably nailed down to about 15 minutes. I want to thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on our webpage. And that is at www.theteniogroup.com. Thank you. Sean, that, that was awesome. One of the questions that popped up during that uh, um, demo was they, they had reviewed SD-WAN a couple years ago, and they said, really, is it that easy? <laughs> I, I think they're being a little sarcastic, but um, you know, what they remember, it wasn't being that easy. Is zero-touch provisioning really that easy? Um, and if they wanted to do that on their own, you know, would they you know, require help from us? Uh, um, or would that be something that they could do on their own? Well, the answer is a couple fold. So a few years ago, I think there were there was there, there's been many many companies that have come and gone for SD WAN, and there's still there's still many spinning up, um, and not all of them have got it right. And and I've actually I actually went back and and I was looking through some of my notes. Um, I proof of concept several of them in the past, and they were a little kludgy, and and they did work, but there was a matter of yeah, there were some issues, but, but this, I mean, it, it's great. It really does work just like that. Um, once you have your template built, you, you get that URL ZTP, um, you can email it to a tech or a manager or, or a group, like a, a deployment group, for example, 
And the, the, the key part is that URL. Once you've got that URL and you connect to the device, that's what gets the configuration over to it. And then maybe the manager can, you know, approve the device for onboarding. You know, it could be, it could be a group of people working on it, but it also could be just that single person or we could do it. We can help them. We can provide professional services. Um, we are the experts, but it doesn't take an expert to deploy them. It really doesn't. Okay. Okay. I, and I did have one other quick question came here. It, it basically says, is that email the only instructions that the branch requires? Um, from what I saw is that basically you, you ship a box out. Um, there's an email uh, that you reply to that helps start the process. Um, and the box then auto, auto dials home uh, and gets its connection. I mean, gets its policy from there. But the only thing it really needs is that one email, and that starts the whole process. Yeah, I mean, it could go straight out of the box, right onto the desk, or, you know, in the closet, wherever it may go. Um, they make the connection. Um, that hash that I showed you in the demo is a complicated but hashed series of configuration instructions that the device knows how to read, and it ports it into it. And no matter how simple the device is configured at the template level in the controller or how complicated, it, it's the same process. It's exactly the same, and that's all they need. And so one more question, and then we'll move on. Um, it sounds like there's probably a, a fair amount of questions and answers in the beginning to make the process start. Oh, God, yeah. Properly. Oh, yeah. But once, once you get that going, then getting the implementation done is really quick and really simple. Yes, it is. And, and this is an interesting point, I think, that you just drove home there. It, it, nothing's changed in terms of the complicated issues that are in a network, right? There are still things. There's a lot of detail, right? But that's part of our, our, our discovery process. We have a, a, a nice questionnaire that gets into all those topics. We try to uncover, you know, turn over all the stones, look under every log. We're looking for all the information. We try to get all that up front so that it's a successful deployment. Um, that's why we encourage people to do a proof of concept up front that nails a lot of that stuff down up front. If the customers are very happy with it, with the solution that it's presenting, then adding sites and turning it into a, a an in production thing is very simple, and it just scales from there and relatively easy from that point out. Sounds good. Let's move on. Okay.